In the Spearhead Traverse, you feel like you're out on this edge of the world and you're looking down into like the cracked bottom of the big glaciers. This is real. Seeing the Spearhead opened my mind to kind of the whole world. It was like a drug. We just wanted more and more of it. We are constantly changing and adapting. There's always the next thing to do. Then it'll evolve into a playground. It's changed a ton, but do you want to not bring people out to these amazing places? This mountain is Decker. Well, that's like the Overlord. I just saw that beautiful Yeah, light. with all the sweet lines. We're starting uh, our spearhead traverse. First climb, done. The Spearhead Traverse travels through unbelievable terrain. It connects the ski resorts of Whistler and Blackcomb. It's about 34 kilometers and 1,700 meters through beautiful mountains and, and across glaciers. But those glaciers and mountains aren't atypical to the coast range. What's really different about the Spearhead Traverse is access. It's located on the periphery of a major ski resort with lifts that travel high into the Alpine. Similar to in the Rockies, the, the Watch Traverse, or if you're in Europe, the Haute Route. The Spearhead Traverse is our traverse for the Coast Mountains. The first we heard anybody trying to do the Traverse was this gang in 1954. They got as far as somewhere around Mount Patterson and the weather came in fierce and they realized it was bad so they just bailed and went straight down the mountainside to Fitzsimmons Creek. I guess they spent one or two days at Singing Pass and then they bailed down to Chequemus Lake, went up to Black Tuss and then down to Garibaldi Lake. And they waxed and waned over how good the skiing was at Singing Pass. They thought there was nothing better to be found anywhere. Oh, it was just a lot of fun. We were young then, we're still in university, so it was a chance to travel every day, camp every night in the snow and to explore if it would be some kind of a high-level traverse. We had terrible equipment, leather ski boots that got wet every day and froze every night. The first trip, we were out for nine days, planned for 10, but it only took nine. <laughs> the whole coast mountains, they were unexplored. Oh, this, this was just a heaven for us, you know, as, as recreation mountaineers. Every nook and cranny we skied up there. When we wanted to go further into the mountains, we had to build an igloo or a cave or a camp. So uh, this was the right place to uh, put a hut, you know. But we couldn't get a permit from the parks. Actually, you know, we decided we wanted to build a hut, so we built a hut. We didn't ask questions, you know. <laughs> 
When the Himmelsbach hut was built in 1967, the intention was to provide a destination for climbers and skiers in the Garibaldi Park area. And it was really successful at doing that. But I think what they didn't foresee was that skiing and ski mountaineering was gonna change. The peaks that were maybe just climbing peaks would become these ski destinations. Yeah, right now we're on the platform. I mean, I think we're dreaming of the north face of Fitzsimmons. It is the gem of the trip. Never have time back here, you always just rip around. The stars haven't aligned yet. <laughs> Maybe today they will. In my lifetime, we've always heard of really good skiers coming from Whistler. Eric Peota and Trevor Peterson, those were kind of the first guys that I had heard of, and they were two of the biggest stars. Well, the spear had, had, a, had a pretty big influence on me as far as uh, my ski career, for sure. You know, it's my backyard, right? That was our, our daily training ground. You know, I guess what drew me back into the spearhead was a lot of things were, were getting done around the local area. And, you know, natural progression was to go a little bit deeper. I have to admit that we were always more drawn to the lines that hadn't been done yet. You know, putting your signature on something was, was pretty special. So, you know, there's a little competition between a few guys that were out there skiing. and. You know, you had to be on your game to get it first. Probably the biggest one was that North Face of Fitzsimmons. If you're coming from either side, you see it, and it's, it's just a gem. You know, Fitzsimmons was only climbed in 1982, so that's a pretty recent time. And I think me and Trevor skied it in, I guess, in 87? I remember Trevor and Eric, they came in a couple hours after us. It was almost dark, and they had just skied Fitzsimmons. We were all just high-fiving, just, no way, yeah, the gem goes down. There's so many classic lines in there, but Fitz was the glory line for the range. All right, good job. Five, four, three, two, one, drop. the spearhead goes down in a day regularly. If you do choose to take more than a day to do it, it's big terrain. The skiing is incredible. The Spearhead Range is exploding in popularity. It's become uh, the next step for people, which is great. It's also dangerous, and there's a lot of pitfalls to that. When you've got that many people coming into an area like the Spearhead Traverse, there are impacts. The big impact we're seeing to the environment is human waste. You find 
dozens and dozens of people during the weekend and where do they poop, you know? There's also huge impacts to, to the safety of the visitors. We're really at a point where we're, we're loving the spearhead to death. Shovel Beacon Probe is what we've put forward as what we need for safety out there, but there's a lot more to it. There's decision-making skills. You just look at the climb up Decker. People often are standing up on top of cornices while there are people below. We're modeling this after something that's already been done. You go to Chamonix and there's billions of people everywhere, and it, but it gets real really fast and people die all the time. There's no question that the increase of easy access into that range is probably gonna bring more accidents and more deaths, but um, that's just the price of the mountains and playing in the mountains. And it doesn't mean it has to happen, you know, you can play in them safely for a long, happy lifetime. But, you know, ride or beware. You're in the mountains and anything can happen at any given time. The Spearhead Range is a area that's within 10 kilometers of Whistler Village. There's over two million visits a year. So you have to make a decision at some point. You need to get out ahead of that and manage it. The only way you can do that is if you start engaging, you have something there that allows you to manage it. So right now, there's a project to develop a, a series of huts through the Spearhead Traverse. Um, one to replace the existing Himmels back hut at Russell Lake. One to be built on the south shoulder of Mount Macbeth. And another on the south ridge of Mount Patterson. As the spearhead heights are, are developed, I think we're going to see a, a pretty big change. To go out there and look at this terrain, not from the perspective of, I have this 50 pound pack on my back. Instead, I'm going to look up and be like, I got four days here. Let's ski that, 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 and that. The spearhead huts will kind of contain the human factor out there. We can create a destination where people then aren't free camping all over meadows. You've then got fixed roof shelter that people can get to and get out of the storm or high avalanche conditions, those kinds of things. I think it's going to be the, the first kind of cohesive chain in this part of the world that provides this fantastic experience for people, but manages the impacts to preserve that experience for future generations and, and future ski tours. The only way you create constituents, in other words, people that care about the backcountry and care about wild places is if they have an experience that's meaningful, huh. then they understand the value of these places and why these environments are critically important to manage and protect. Powder. <laughs> We're talking about an area that already has thousands of people going back there. So the idea that somehow you can just sort of put your head in the sand and keep it as it is, well, that's not realistic because what it is now is not what it's going to be in 10 years. If you're a regular Spearhead user and you think it sucks because now there's going to be even more people in the Spearhead, it doesn't take much to get all by yourself here in the Coast Mountains. It's still the same place. It hasn't changed. It is just easier to get to. So it means you can spend more time 
doing what you really came there to do, the ski mountaineer and be in the mountains and see that beautiful terrain. Welcome to Whistler! 